Today we are taking a look at another pen display, this time from Gomar. The PD1610 is an amazing value for the money kind of deal, and I had mostly a great time using it. This review copy was provided by Gomar, but it is gonna be a transparent review. You can watch all the information in this video and decide whether you want to invest your money in something like this. This video should allow you to make an educated decision before buying. But first, let's check some of the pen display features and some inboxing. This is a pen display, obviously, which means this is not a standalone computer or a tablet like an iPad or a Windows Surface. This is just a screen that you can draw on, so these devices have to be plugged into a PC to be able to draw on it. In the case of this display tablet, you can both connect using a Type-C cable, which I really like, or an HDMI plus a power cable, which I'm not really a fan of. If I'm gonna connect something in this day and age, it better be wireless, but if not, at least let me use only one cable. Granted, in this price range, you can expect full features, but I'm happy that the one Type-C cable option is available, which is a great work by Goma. So, this is a QHD display, which means you have 2560 by 1440 pixels. The screen is also laminated, and if you don't know what that means, it comes down to basically having no gap between your pen tip and the display underneath, so that annoying parallax effect will not be an issue. The display itself is really well built. I was actually surprised how good it looked with a back aluminum alloy finish and engraved texture sides. I think this is a great looking display, and the chair on top is the new 16 by 10 ratio which provides exactly 11% screen real estate. But I left the words for last. I'm not a fan of the touch sensitive express keys on the side, but we're gonna talk about those later. The panel's color stats are 130% coverage of sRGB and 86% Adobe RGB, 90% DSIP3 and 80% NTSC. So, the color accuracy of this display is not the best we've seen, but it is definitely not bad, especially factoring in the price range, which makes it more than reasonable. The screen also has a matte anti-glare finish to it, so harsh reflections should not be an issue for the most part. Alright, before we go on, let's see what we got in the box. On a side note, I really like how colorful the design of the packaging is. In the package, you will find the display itself, of course, a display stand, the Gomon pen designated by AP51, a pen stand, and if you open it, you can find 8 replacement nibs, as well as a nib remover. You will also have USB Type-C to 2 USB Type-A, and a USB Type-C to USB Type-C video cable, in addition to a mini HDMI to full-size HDMI cable. You will also have a powerful adapter with interchangeable plugs, a glove, a piece of cloth, quick start guide, and warranty info papers. To start using the display, you can hook it to your computer using the Type-C cable, or if you don't have that video Type-C I.O. on your desktop or laptop, you can use the Type-A USB with the HDMI cable combo. For Mac users, you can just simply use the Type-C cable. However, image quality is not going to be great for the simple fact that Mac OS works better with HIDPI and low DPI displays. Windows, on the other hand, does not have this limitation. UI elements will always remain sharp regardless of the scaling. To access the OSD settings, you can click and hold the power button on the top for a few seconds, and the OSD parameter window will appear and you can use the pen to adjust settings like brightness, contrast, color temperature, input source, and so on. The display comes with a stand in the box, and similar to other display tablets, it's not the best stand. You are probably better off buying an adjustable stand. The one from Pablo instantly comes to mind, but it is not the worst I've seen. If this is your first display tablet, which I'm thinking is gonna be popular for people on budget, it is a good one to start with. It boasts multiple levels, and it is crafted from metal and sports an appealing high contrast black and white design and features rubber in all the right spots, in addition to ensuring long lasting performance. But the funny thing is that I didn't know how to set it up when I first started using it. I actually used it for the first few hours 
in the wrong orientation. So remember, rubber up and angle adjuster down. After that, you can head to the GoMon website and grab the driver, which will allow you to calibrate the display, customize the shortcuts, adjust the pen curve, as well as work area, and all the express keys. The GoMon software allows you to adjust the pen curve by using two points on the pressure sensitivity curve. However, on Mac, you will get only one control point. So, more finer pressure adjustment can be achieved on Windows and you can adjust the two side buttons on the pen. The pen included with the display with AP51 reference has the usual 8192 levels of pressure sensitivity. It is a battery free pen and I'd say I didn't feel like I was missing anything using the pen. It seems to be on par with all the industry styluses like the Wacoms and XP pens as it supports 60 degrees of tilt so you can rotate some brushes simply by rotating the pen. However, although I like the pen, I'm going to complain about the pen side keys. I don't like the feelings of those clicks, and for some reason, it sounds kind of stiff. Other than that, the pen is as good as it gets. Last but not least, let's talk about the express keys on the side. I don't like these keys for the simple fact that they are touch sensitive. Just for the short period I used the display, I struggled with it greatly from not knowing where to click exactly to hitting these buttons randomly. There is nothing to distinguish between the buttons, it's just a continuous flat surface. And I can only assume that this was done for aesthetic reasons, because I can't imagine real keys would cost more. Or maybe because this is only the way to keep the screen thin. On top of that, there is no multifunctional round dial. So either way, I quickly opt to turn the express keys off, which you can do by the way. Other than that, the screen is amazing. It offers a huge drawing surface, it is well built, and I was actually surprised by the quality of the overall experience. So if you want to check this display tablet and for more information, you can follow the link in the description down below. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.